Bukan ramai <laughs> Stop filming me. <laughs> hey bike junkies, welcome back to the shop. On the rack is a 1984 Diamondback Formula One. We're gonna clean her up, rebuild her with some original components and parts from our friends over at Fort Jot BMX and get her back in the dirt. All right, here she is on the rack, our 84 Diamondback Formula One, ready for assembly. Now while I appreciate a full restoration, and there's some dudes out there who do a great job, I like my builds to feel like they've ridden right out of the 80s and they're still rolling. So my bikes usually have a little bit of character. When I found this bike, it was pretty dirty. So the first thing we did was strip down all the parts, take it apart, take off all the decals, and just gave it a thorough clean. Washed it over real good, got all the dirt and grime off, a little bit of surface rust and some crevices, and just got it shined up, ready to go. There's a great story behind this bike. I stopped by a local thrift store one day and cruised by the bike rack out front before going inside. The rack had its usual pile of cheap kids bikes, but towards the end of the row was this 80s chromoly BMX bike. And when I saw the Diamondback stickers, I was completely stoked. Long story short, I took home the 84 Formula One that day, and if I told you how much I paid for it, you wouldn't believe it. Daniel son. Don't forget to breathe. Very important. At box stock, the Formula One weighed only 21 pounds, 7 ounces, making it one of the lightest BMX bikes available. In an exclusive BMX action first test, the May 1984 issue of their magazine reviewed the bike and held it as Diamondback's missing link. The Diamondback still had a good amount of original parts when I found it, which was great. But one obvious change was the handlebars. From the factory, it came with Formula One bars that had a nice bend in the cross piece and a seven and a half inch rise, while these were taller and straight across. These bars are period correct though, and possibly from a 1985 Diamondback Hot Streak or Viper. The seat was the original Diamondback five gold that came with the bike but it was really scarred on the nose and across the back. I smoothed the rough parts out as best as I could because I wanted to keep it on the bike. The Diamondback logo still shows on one side. All right, I got the Formula One all put together, right down to installing the pedals. When I went to put them on, I realized I ordered the wrong size. This was totally my bad. The last few builds I've done were one-piece cranks, which took half-inch pedals, and this bike had three-piece cranks, which take 9 16 pedals. What I love about Port Chop BMX's site is their attention to details in their parts descriptions, uh, including reminders like this along with installation tips. Lesson not just karate only, lesson for all life.
All right, bike junkies, here's a little tip for you as you're doing your build. When you get ready to install your headset, there's this little piece called a crown race that slides down on your fork first. You just put it on your fork like that. At the bottom, there's a little piece of metal that's flared out, and the crown race has got to slide down on top of that, and it's pretty snug. If you don't have the tool to do this, good luck. You're going to spend all day trying to get it on there. I didn't have a tool, and they're pretty pricey, so I did some research online, and there's actually some guys, so this is not my original idea, that have made a homemade one for about five to seven bucks. I decided to give it a try. It's made out of PVC. Now, I fancied mine up here, but what this is is a one-inch cap, a one-inch piece of PVC, cut about seven to eight inches, and a one-quarter by one-inch bushing that goes on the bottom. You just slide it on like this, and as you see, it's gonna snug down on your crown race. Just get a rubber mallet. Give it a few taps. Just like that, crown race is on.